Hey everybody and welcome on back to Minecraft. Today's episode of Building with Whip, we're going to be working more on our terraforming landscaping guide by working in this custom area here. Last episode, I had a so so much fun working on this project over here. It was very very cool being able to bring our mountains down into the ground so it's much more of a they feel so much more structured in the world now instead of previously over on this side, we can get a good glimpse of it. Basically, they were looking like this, going pretty much everywhere around without this face on it. Felt very fake and very just lifted up in the air and not very complete. Now that we have this side in, however, it's looking pretty freaking fantastic. I am so in love with these mountains right now. I can't wait to keep working on them. And today, we are going to be working on new bits into the build. We're going to be talking about how to add detail into your custom terrain. First and foremost, obviously, we have these trees. We have these like aspen style birch trees right here, as well as having some spruce trees. We will go over how to build these ones later. Then down here in the lower part of our custom area, we've been working with some custom oak trees. I actually don't think there's any in this area. Nah, not quite that we can see. But we're going to be working on building up a custom... Right there. There's one of them. I'm going to show you guys how we build up those three different custom trees in this area. And it's going to be pretty freaking awesome. Beyond that, though, what I do want to focus on for the major, major part of today's episode is first off, how to bring in these cliffs. How we can make these cliffs so much more detailed by how we bring in our coarse dirt, bringing in our oak leaves throughout here, as well as doing the detailed floor pattern, which we have our path blocks in. We've got some coarse dirt. We got some gravel and we got some small stones all over the place because I think stones can add that bit of gray into everything, really mix it up. But anyways, with that, let me get my stuff sorted and I'll be right back with y'all. Before we do that, however, I think one thing I owe you all is one first, I thank you so much everybody who enjoyed that April Fool's Day video that came out last Monday. I had so much fun making that one. I want to quickly show y'all how that video was done. Inside of our shaders that we have on here, we can jump into the video settings, into shaders, but the Silder's Vibrant Shaders, you can jump into shader options here, and it's called White World, and it's super cool. I randomly found it and thought it was so, so funny that I just had to mess with you all about this one. And you can see it just changes the entire world in here. You can tweak the shader settings a little bit more here and there to get rid of some of that fancy stuff like leaves moving, all that stuff moving around, the custom sky, you can get rid of all of that. And I thought it was just way too perfect to pass up the opportunity for, so thank you all so much for that. These poor little salmon are trying so hard to get up the waterfall. Go buddy, go, you're almost there. You're almost there, you can do it, I believe in you. Those squids down there were magically floating up here in the, way, way up in the air a second ago. It was super, super funny looking. Anyways, what we're going to be working on first and foremost is detailing out the edge of these cliffs. Obviously, they look a little bare and boring right now, just being grass going all the way throughout this. So what I like to do is I like to come in here and basically just using like a salt and pepper format, more or less, of just bringing everything in together. And it's going to be a little difficult, I think, bringing things like that. And what we can do in here is just jump in throughout this entire area, bringing in a bunch of coarse dirt. It's okay if we have a bunch of the stuff here. It really doesn't matter. I think it might actually be better if we just take this out one by one so we don't have to keep swapping off of that shovel. But we can do something like you, maybe bring them up in here, and this will give us a decent idea of what things will look like in this area in the end. And luckily for ourselves here, it's super easy. There's not a whole lot going on for it because we are going to cover up a lot of that. Goodbye, dirt block. Uh, we're going to be covering up a lot of the stuff here with some bushes and things just to make it a bit more interesting. But this is a good idea for the area in general, what we might want to do there. So not completely coarse dirt everywhere and not completely grass everywhere. Then after we have that in place, I like bringing in our oak leaves to help give ourselves a bit more height variation and just general life into this area. So maybe we put one right in there, see if we can't get a leaf back. And then we can do like this guy right here, bring in some bushes, just making sure it looks like they're coming up off of the edge of this. Now, a great way we can mask this corner in right here is by having a few bushes just hanging off of here as well. We don't want all of them hanging down into the water, however, so maybe we have just some ones right up here on the edge that we can use as well. And basically working this format right here, just bringing in a few little bits like this, going all the way along this entire duration, going all the way down there will be pretty freaking awesome for what we want our end results to be. Also, we can bring in some path blocks as well to help break things up a bit more here and just add that extra bit of interest and variation to the ground. Because I personally like in the idea for this general area up here, I've always wanted to see it as a majority path box because I think it gives a cooler color to it, like colder feel, and that'll really, really go in hand with the mountains feeling that we're trying to create here. So I think that's kind of what the goal is here. Let me get this wall in going all the way down this one, and then we can work on some trees. 
Transitioning from having absolutely nothing along the edges of our cliff here into what we have now. I am very, very happy with this thing. One unfortunate thing that we did come across towards the end of the cliff, as you can see there, that swamp biome starts to take effect on what's going along with our cliff face here, and the leaves get very, very dark, unfortunately. Oh well, it's something we could deal with. If World Edit gets rolled out sometime soon, we could come in here and change the biome over to like the birch forest or the river biome or whatever we were doing up in this area way, way long ago. I think it was a birch forest. Yep, looks like it was. So next thing I want to show you guys is first off, well, we did come through here and do a little bit of work. I guess we can get a close up look at all of this one. It's looking pretty fantastic. Next thing I want to jump into is the trees, however, to give you all some examples of how you can build some trees. Really, really quick ones, really easy custom ones to make. And I think the best way to do that would be a mini time lapse for each of them. So I'll catch you all on the other side. All right, let's go into these trees. I do want to start this out by saying I do have a tutorial video out for the first two of these ones. So if you want to go check that out, I'll try and leave links down to the video to those videos in the description. If I don't yell at me there, Anyways, for this one, the important part is that at the very top, you want to stack two leaves high on top of your fence wall. The fence should be about seven and nine blocks tall. Then from there, we make little arrow shapes on the tippy top of every single one of the fence bits that you stick out. That's basically the first tree. I know we're going a little quick on these guys just to get them all running throughout. As mentioned, there are tutorials on them already. For the spruce one, however, the idea here is to make a little plus shape on the bottom and have those different heights varying between two to three blocks tall. Then bring the center one up another three to four blocks taller than that. Then from there, we bring the fences up probably about seven or eight blocks tall on the fence. And then create a larger T shape or a plus sign shape off of the fences at the bottom. Create a circle around that with the spruce leaves and basically try and point these up to the top. Typically, I recommend on the top here is you want to bring that center point up about on top of your fence. Add like three to four leaf blocks on it and then you're pretty much good to go on that. Now for the final one, which is the one I'm still very much working on this guy. I'm not super sure on how I like it quite yet on my own side. I'm still trying to perfect how to build this one is this custom oak tree. The idea behind this is that each limb of the oak tree, each branch that we have here has its own set of leaves. One thing I've been really, really trying to work on recently is instead of just building a giant bubble of leaves going around my trees, I wanna make it sure that it looks like the limbs inside of the trees are actually the place where those leaves are coming from. So in this one, you're gonna see a lot of airy spots, a lot of different areas like that. And the different ways that I like building this up is making some larger limbs at the base because they'd be stretching out more so that the leaves could get more sun going on there. Then as we go up, the limbs get a little bit skinnier. And I think overall, I'm really happy with this one. That was really, really good, but let's jump back into the world. Welcome on back everybody. I know those time lapses were pretty quick. They're building up the trees, so I wanted to quickly walk around them one more time to give you all a heads up of what we got going on here. For our skinny aspen tree, you can tell it's an aspen tree because the way it is, just knock on it right there and you'll figure it all right, right there. Anyways, this one, what we're basically doing here is just using some fence bits as some branches, sticking them out, going up every few blocks. The goal is to not have them within two blocks of each other, or so you want two blocks of space in between every fence block, otherwise it looks a little too cramped in there. And then basically just create these little upwards arrow shape things right on that and you're all good to go. This guy here is basically the hardest part is building this base circle and everything comes off of that. Do the fences sticking out, then do a leaf, come down one and do a leaf over right there. Then you can create a circle going all the way around and mix it up a bit. The main goal is to make sure that those four right in that area are not on the same line. So you'll see this one right here is actually one higher, makes the tree look a little bit more natural. Now our lonesome tree standing out in this area, this oak one, this is the one that I've been struggling with as y'all heard. It's, it's an interesting one. I've been practicing these a lot recently. I've been trying to improve them myself and I found that the best way to do them, as I mentioned, is to work around building the leaves off each branch that comes out. So we don't wanna build the leaves for the entire tree. We wanna build it for off of each little branch and then it'll actually come together as long as you have enough branches in there. So if you're worried about these ones, go overboard with how many branches you add in. Like we have a bunch of these in here. I think I probably should have added another one coming out of that guy right there. So just having a bit up there because this area looks a bit flat when you look at it from all the way back here. But overall, I do like these ones. Anyways, next thing that we are gonna be working on is or talking about is ground foliage or ground cover because leaving this all as grass on grass on grass going everywhere, it can look a little boring. So there's a few easy ways that we can mix this up. One quick way to actually make this mix this up going throughout is to add in rocks. 
Rocks are something that we can use to, to disrupt the lines of the grass grassy terrain that we have created beforehand very, very easily. So I like to keep these ones fairly basic, bring in just some stone, we bring in some cobblestone, some cobblestone slabs, and all of these, and maybe we also bring in a few bits of mossy cobblestone, which I do actually have some over here. Shulker, Shulker Mountain over here, I, we're taking a turn from Scar right now, is very, very much ever growing, and this thing is expanding <laughs> like crazy. You need a lot of resources to be able to do these projects. You need a lot of different resources, and it's hard to move a lot of variety of things in the scale that we're using here to make it worthwhile. So what I like to do with these guys anyways is just creating little rock structures like this. Maybe that one looks a bit weird right here. It doesn't matter too much about the shape of them. They are rocks after all, so it's okay if they're mixed up and messed up and crazy all over the place. One thing I do like to add into them, which will be a bit difficult here now that we're at this point, is actually can we actually get away with this let's see can we get just a regular dirt block right here and that's going to cause a little bit of lag filling in that lighting but adding some gravel at the base of our rocks make it look like there's a tiny tiny bit of debris going on here i think we can get this one over right like bam and bam and we're just going to throw the grass block back in there throw that guy right there and this can help us out a lot. And now using those ideas that we've been kind of carrying across of bringing in our path blocks all the way around this area, also filling in these gaps right here so it doesn't look too stupid. Uh, we can bring in a bunch of the path blocks and then grab the coarse dirt that I had out here before. That is regular dirt. Bringing in the coarse dirt, we can create small patches here with our coarse dirt and fill in a few small areas like this. So what I like to do is basically these guys and it's going to cause a lot of lag doing this unfortunately so we won't be able to do a big time lapse of this because that would just lag way too much for the time lapse that would look a little weird but basically bringing these all in right down here like this is something that's really easy to do it's pretty simple to be able to get a lot of stuff like that i do like to occasionally drop a few pieces of gravel in throughout this area so we can just do one of you right there and drop some gravel and just add that tiny bit of gray throughout everything. And then on top of this, what I like to do for this upper area here is occasionally bringing in a few pieces of ferns and grass just to hide them around. Unfortunately, we can't place them down here on this stuff, but it does look really cool when we start adding them in. Once we start bone mealing them up as well, then here to make this a bit more interesting, actually, if we just maybe did something like that and maybe did you right there so we can make it look like there's some mossy grassy stuff growing up on top of that stuff we'll throw a leaf block on there and it can look pretty dang cool i'm gonna go ahead and spend a bit of time mixing up this area right here probably taking this section and drawing like a diagonal line back into here because i don't want to go too overboard with it for now because i still don't quite know what we're going to be doing up in this area here but i want to make sure you guys all have a great idea of what this can look like in the end welcome on back to the custom terrain area that we've been working on today i'm very very happy with the result that we have going on for this so far imagine that we had all of this up here inside of my head haha <laughs> get it that was a nice pun there <laughs> We had all this green space up here that really wasn't doing too much for us, and we were able to turn it into this actually pretty easily. This didn't take me too long. It's been about 20, 30 minutes since I met up with you all last. So it is a bit of a grindy project, but most of that was bringing in where we wanted these rock locations and where we wanted everything else, which is looking fantastic. I did bring in some ferns, some grass, some double tall grass, as well as some of our little dandelions and the azure bluets to get bits of color splashed around here. I didn't want to include too many flowers because I still want this to look fairly bare, more or less, going throughout here. Last thing that I do want to include for today's episode, however, is we need to throw a few trees into this region. I was thinking some trees would be a great way to finalize this area. Since we have the oak tree over there, I think it's okay if we have them in the lower region. So I think we'll do an oak tree here. We might throw another one in there, maybe another one over in that area to add that variety in there as well. Then down in this area, as we work from the edge of the cliff, Moving up towards the mountain, we wanna make sure that we get the density of the trees correct. So in this area, I don't really care too much about what I'm covering up here, seeing as we just placed all the blocks down. That's totally fine. Those were just here for the base layer. Then here, maybe we'll throw one of those guys. So basically that's gonna be a spruce tree. This is gonna be one of our skinny aspen trees. Maybe right up in this area, we'll do another one of these. So we get two of those and we're basically just trying to dot these around. So they're not too common, but we wanna make sure that we have enough of them. So we got those in right here. We got three of them right there. I like to group the aspen trees together so they have a bit of a larger footprint to them instead of being those kind of small, small structures that we have right now. Up here, we can do another spruce tree. I'm thinking because we got the oak one right there, he's going to be pretty massive and pretty wide. That'll be okay. Then maybe we do an aspen tree there, another one right up here, 
and we can throw a third in. Eh, we'll get rid of, ah, eh, no, let's place that little guy back in there and throw him down here. Right like that. That should be pretty good. That's enough trees to build for today. So I'm gonna get these ones built up and I'll be right back with y'all. Very quickly now, before I get the tree builds going underway, I decided to build out all of the base structures for them. I thought this was a pretty dang cool view, so I wanted to share it with you all. This is basically how everything looks from the skeletons of just the root structures and the branch structures and everything like that. So, you know, it's something basic like this can actually turn into a really cool force. So let's do it. And with that, our trees are now in place and this is looking absolutely amazing. I am so happy with the final result on this one. We're getting those golden hour light streams coming in here and all that good stuff. These amazing shadows are cast. The mountains behind are looking so epic. Imagine when we have a forest stretching across this entire area. Oh man, that's gonna be freaking amazing. I am so ready for all of this. Also, fun fact, today is episode 190, which means 10 episodes from now, we are gonna be doing our big old world tour and download. We got quite a while for that one, so if you guys got any ideas of who we should bring on as a guest, let me know down in the comments below. Anyways, these trees are looking pretty freaking epic coming throughout here. I'm so happy with how they're looking. We got a bunch of these built up in here. A few I need to come do some finishing touches for, like making sure that this doesn't feel like a harsh line right there. I'm very happy with the oak tree here that we brought in. I think a few oak trees dotted in and around this area to mix up the consistency, just being these other two trees to bring in a third random tree in here. Just mixing it in every once in a while, I think will be a great way to add a lot of variety and just some extra life into this region. But oh man, this is looking so freaking epic. I cannot wait for this to be stretching across everywhere. That being said, however, I do have a comment or question of the day ready to go here. This one's coming in from Itira. Itira? Itiria. I don't really know. They're saying, nice work. I think those small cliff faces next to the river before you go down the waterfall look like they should have some hobbit holes in them. I'm just saying. I couldn't, eh, sorry, pausing everything there. I couldn't tell if they were talking about like the cliffs up in this region, like those guys, or the ones down here, like in that area. I'm not saying we're gonna bring a hobbit build into there, but that did get me thinking and really, really wanting to get back to doing a hobbit build. I haven't done one since, I haven't done anything hobbit related since I basically started YouTube way, way long ago. Those videos no longer exist. Some people might've seen them way, way back before I deleted them. But we did a Hobbit build in creative when I would just started out on the channel and it was so much fun and I would love to be able to get back into that and experiment with those styles again. So if you guys want to see anything Hobbit related, let me know or any other fantasy type builds that you guys are interested in seeing, let me know that down below as well. I'm looking to get some ideas on the table moving into Minecraft 1.14 so we can have a bunch of brand new build ideas, brand new things to work forward with. And overall, I'm just super, super freaking pumped for that. So anyways, thank you all so much for watching today's episode. I do hope this one was helpful for you all with your terraforming abilities and growing as a Minecraft builder. Let me know what else you guys want to be seeing as far as terraforming tips and things like that go. Please hit that like button. I already said that. Please hit that subscribe button if you are new. And I will catch you on the flip side.